I'm creating a roguelike game in one month, and to match the cyberpunk theme, I thought it would be pretty fun if we tried to recreate the same Devastan that we see prominently featured in Edge Runners. And I'm gonna take you along for the ride. My name is TJ, we are now in week three of our one month challenge. Here we have our player, right? He spins around and shoots at enemies that approach from all directions. In the anime, Trigger Studios created this cool rainbow duplication effect that it acts like a trail behind the player. Okay, so first let's see if someone else has already done that. So I can just copy it. Well, all right, I'll take that as a no. So let's break this down into smaller steps. So step number one, uh, we're going to have to duplicate the player's body. And step number two, we're going to have to destroy those duplications after a set amount of time. Uh, step three, we're going to make those duplications change color to get that sort of rainbow effect. And four, we're also going to have to slow down time for this. All right, so for step one, let's figure out how to duplicate the player's body. I just watched this tutorial from Gabriel Ag Aguiar. Prod gave me a pretty good idea about how we're going to go about this. So what we're going to be doing is creating a copy of the player's skin. Then uh, we'll position it exactly where the player is at. Then we will delete that copy later. All right, let's test this and see how it looks. This centipede is a predator. That looks awful. All right, I, I had to fiddle around with it a little bit, but I'm pretty happy with how it looks now. Step one's complete. Now we need a way to destroy all those copies. Simply filtering through the game object list and destroying them all is really not great for performance. You don't wanna be constantly instantiating and destroying game objects. So we're going to set up some object pooling for this. It's just a fancy way of saying we're going to create a bunch of copies, uh, then we set them all inactive so you can't see them. Then when we need one, we just grab it, put it in the exact position we want, set it active, and then when it's done being used, we just set it inactive. That is a pretty good performance increase and it helps us cross off step number two. So now let's tackle the coloring. First, we need to set up a sort of transparent, see-through, ghosty looking shader. A few moments later, and that was easy enough, but now I gotta figure out how to switch colors on it. Looking at the footage from the show, you can see there's at least primary and secondary colors. Okay, so I set up an array to hold all the different colors, and what we're going to do is use color.lerp to lerp from color to color to color. And then when we get to the end of the um, array of colors, we're just going to start back over from the beginning and go through them again. And we set the color of the shader to the transition color that we are constantly lerping through that array of. And after a little bit of tweaking, I like it a lot. All right, let's check off box number three. Final step of slowing down time. I don't wanna slow down all time because that's going to screw up some of our camera's functionality. And then we would have to make the player move faster than time so it's actually a lot cleaner and simpler to just fake it by slowing down uh, two things, just the player's bullets and the enemies. So to do it on the player's bullets is super easy. I slapped a little function in here that slows down the speed of the bullets if we're in sand devastan time. And then I apply that same logic here to the enemies. So there we go, simple as that. All right, so this is good. Um, we're almost out of time, but I wanna add a bit of juice for when the player is entering or exiting, um, Go, you know, you know the, you the know thing. thing. So I set up a second, slightly different post-processing volume that we will switch to, and I changed up the camera field of view. Not bad, not too bad. I'm actually pretty happy with the uh, progress on this so far. All right, so let me show you some of the other things that I've been working on. I need to add a whole new system for mods now that we have the Sand oh. Devastan. These are going to be obtainable via a card that pops up on level up. And once you select it, there's a new icon in the bottom right, left, something, I don't know. When the ability is activated, the icon grays out and has a little slider that scrolls down until it's active again, then you can press it and queue it up. I also did a little switcheroo on the UI, so now the abilities will be called via buttons one and two, and there are only two gun slots, so we'll add one key to toggle back and forth from your main gun to your secondary. Now there is a second mod that I came up with called Angel Fire, which is a pretty blatant rip of the name from Altered Carbon, but I don't know. Netflix canceled it after two seasons like they do all their good shows, so sue me. For legal reasons, that's a joke. Anyway, I like to imagine it is a laser coming down from some ship flying overhead. Pretty simple, grabs whichever enemy has the highest health, warms up for a minute, then blasts down on them. I want to add an area of effect that nukes anyone near the blast. It'll require some tweaking. It's a decent start though. Now, another idea I had was to add a drone that can be selected in the upgrades. This is a friendly little guy that follows the player and hovers up and down. It will target whichever enemy is closest to the player, spinning to fire at them. And now that we have a decent amount of things to kill enemies with, 
let's come up with a few different enemy designs for us to obliterate. The scope of this game has just gotten completely out of hand for only one month, but we're going to grind it out and get as much done as possible. Now, looking over the comments from the first video, the overwhelming majority said robots over zombies. So although the level one enemies are going to be zombies, after that point, we are going to go all in on the robots. I want to make a few of them unique though. So this shirtless maniac here, we're gonna call him the Fanatic. I then got an animation off of Mixamo. It kinda reminds me of that one Urukai guy from Lord of the Rings. And just like him, I strapped some ordinances onto this guy and sent him on his way. So I also added some particle effects to his hands that will create little trails as he runs around. Why? I don't know, but it looks funny. I then coded up a bit of a kamikaze function so he just runs towards the player and explodes. So if you see one of these guys on the screen, obviously try to shoot it down as fast as possible before it gets too close. And it was around this point that I realized that I need some actual spawning mechanics so that we can spawn multiple enemies intertwined with each other. So I set up these wave functions. Uh, there's a certain amount of enemies that spawn in each wave and they are randomly shuffled. So you can get like a whole bunch of zombies and then maybe one or two of the uh, fanatic guys. Then I added robots with guns cause I can. They will pause and shoot at the player. And to differentiate their bullets from mine, I added a bit of a red color to them, so hopefully that'll be good enough to prevent confusing the player. They move a bit slow, but that's more or less by design, so that you'll have to dodge the bullets or, you know, roll through them. Now that we have a decent amount of enemy types, let's add a proper boss. So I got this massive mech model, slapped an entire f howitzer on his arm, and then added like 30 of them for testing. There are a few issues. Okay, several issues. What is this? Why? Just why? Eventually, I got it off. <sighs> nope, never mind. Alright, took a lot longer than I expected, but eventually I got our robot boss to walk around and shoot at the player. I like it. I think it's a uh, unique encounter for the player. Then moving on, I watched a video on how to implement Steam achievements. Uh, it's really simple. Super easy. But I came up with a few ideas, hopped into Photoshop with those icons we created last week, bada bing, bada boom, now we have Steam achievements. Now next we're going to jump right into procedural generation for our city, but we're out of time so you're going to have to subscribe, catch next week's episode where we go in depth on that, love you guys, bye.